Well, hello, I'm David Haviland with the University of California Cooperative Extension, and I'm here today with the Onboard of California to talk about monitoring for naval orange worm. And monitoring is a very important part of an integrated pest management program for naval orange worm. If you don't know what the moth's doing, uh, it's hard to know how to control it. And so what we want to do, uh, either you or your pest control advisor each year, is you want to keep track of where are the moths, when are the moths present, and how many are there, as well as when are the eggs being laid, and when are they present, and when are they potentially a harm for you. And there's a few different ways to do that. So the first technique is with what's called an egg trap. So egg traps come in a couple of different forms, but they're black cylinders that look like this. They have grooves in the top, and then they have a mesh in the middle. Along with these egg traps, you'll get a pouch or, or packet of almond meal. It's an oily ground up almond meal that's very attractive to the navel orange room females. This meal is poured inside the top of the cylinder. You put the top back on, you hang this in the orchard, loop that over a limb, and you come back one week later to see what happens. When you come back, you'll see little orange to amber colored eggs lining uh, right here inside these grooves. So you'll count those and keep track of those numbers either once or twice a week, okay? That's how you use the egg trap. The other types of traps you can see in front of me here, we have wing traps on this side of the table and we have delta traps on this side of the table. So wing and delta traps are used for pheromone traps, PPO traps, and for Peterson traps. And I'll walk through each of those with you. So the pheromone traps are made to catch males, okay? The female releases pheromone in the orchard, the males sense that pheromone and try to find her. So what we do is we take lures that look like this, okay? This small little plastic containers, uh, they look different from different companies. These lures are placed inside of one of these traps, okay? Inside of a wing trap, or inside of a delta trap, we like to have them placed in the tops of the traps. Uh, they're most effective that way. You place the lures inside and leave the trap in the field for a week. The male moths think there's a female inside of the trap. They fly to it and they get stuck on the sticky surface that you can see here in the bottom. These traps are specifically catching males. So what if you also want to catch females? Uh, that can be a little more tricky because a female, of course, is not attracted to a pheromone. So to solve that problem, a new lure has come out that's called a PPO lure. Uh, this stands for phenyl propionate, and this is a scent that's given off by a tree that's attractive also to the female. So to make a PPO trap, what you do is you put a regular pheromone lure in, okay, like we previously described, also with this PPO lure, and the two of those in combination with each other are gonna catch both males and females. Now the other way to catch females in particular, if that's what you're interested in, is to put in what's called a sachet, and we call this now a Peterson trap. So this sachet contains ground up pistachio meats, and when you take these meats and you grind them up, the oils and all the scents are released. If you smell this, it definitely smells like pistachios, and the females will smell that. They'll think it's a great place to lay eggs in the orchard. They'll fly into the trap, Okay, you can imagine if this is in the top of the trap here, they'll fly in to lay an egg and the female will get stuck on the sticky. So again, males or females, you have options. Now, what are some of the uses of these traps? Uh, first of all, egg traps are specifically used early in the season. The greatest benefit you get from there, uh, from them, is to determine a biofix. So you're gonna go out in the orchard check these twice a week, particularly in April, and you're gonna find that for a few weeks or a couple weeks you don't catch any eggs, and then you'll catch a few, and eventually you'll go two evaluation dates that both have eggs. That date is what we call a biofix. Okay, that marks the date that egg laying has begun. If you take that date and use degree day models, okay, every 1,050 degree days, navel orange worm will complete a generation. So if you know when the egg laying starts in April and you use degree day models that are available on the University of California's IPM program uh, website, you can estimate when those eggs will become adults and produce eggs of their own, which is typically gonna be around hull split. That can help you time your hull split spray to know exactly when you wanna get it there to make sure those products, uh, most of which these days control eggs and larvae, 
can be applied right when those eggs and larvae are being uh, laid, and that way you can protect your almond crop as it starts to split. Now, the pheromone traps are a little bit different because, as I mentioned, they are collecting males. So with males, you want to be watching for flights. You want to know when a flight starts, you want to know the peak of the flight, and you want to know the end of the flight. So navel orange room typically has a first flight that occurs in April and May. They have a second flight, which is the one you care about the most, that starts uh, right before or right at the start of hull split of nonpareils and goes for a few weeks. And then you have a third flight that typically starts in August, okay? and that's gonna occur right around the time uh, nonpareils are, are starting to be shaken, uh, a little bit after that, and occur mostly in the month of August. And then if you're in the southern half of the industry, you also have a fourth flight, which will occur in September. So if you can know when the flights are starting, how high they get, and where they're ending, you can use that information to know, first of all, how much risk you might be at eggs from those moths. But also, you can do tricky things like, if you know when the third flight is gonna start, you can also figure out whether or not your nonpareils will be harvested before or after that flight starts. If you know you're, you're gonna harvest your nonpareils before the third flight starts, you don't need to be as aggressive on insecticide sprays. Likewise, if you can predict that that third flight is gonna occur a couple of weeks before you're able to get your nonpareils off the tree, in that case, you're gonna, be, you're gonna need to be more aggressive with an insecticide spray, perhaps do two sprays in that orchard to help make sure that those nonpareils and those pollinators are protected. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people ask, what about thresholds? They say, how many moths in a trap or how many eggs in an egg trap justifies a treatment? Unfortunately, things are not that simple. Okay, the amount of damage you get from navel orange room has to do with how many moths there are, when they occur, okay? That has to do with how, many, how much damage you had last year. It has to do with the level of sanitation, okay? Has to do with overwintering survival. And a lot of it has to do with harvest date. So because of that, there's no magic number that says if you catch 20 moths in a pheromone trap that you should spray once or 40 indicates twice, that kind of thing. However, you absolutely can compare trap captures this year to those from the previous year and the year before that to get a general feel for whether or not you're in what might, you might call a good or a bad year with relation to navel orange room. And that can definitely help you make decisions on how aggressive you need to be with your sprays. Making decisions about how to monitor your orchard, one of the first questions you have to ask is, am I managing navel orange worm conventionally or with mating disruption, okay? Now, in both cases, you're gonna use egg traps. Egg traps, in both cases, will equally help you know when to set the biofix. The concern is with pheromone traps. So pheromone lures are not attractive in a mating disruption orchard because the entire orchard smells like a pheromone. So if you're in a conventionally managed orchard, pheromone traps are something you absolutely should use. If you're in an, a mating disruption orchard, you need to be using the pheromone in combination with the PPO. And what that's gonna allow you to do is that's gonna allow you to see female moths in particular that get attracted to the trap. That way you can track the start, the peak, and the ends of each flight based on females instead of males. Now many mating disruption um, orchards, the pest control advisors also like to put out a regular pheromone trap. And the reason for that is you should, in a main disruption block, be able to put out a pheromone trap, and you should not be catching anything in it. So if you have a pheromone trap that catches nothing, but a pheromone plus a PPO trap that's catching female moths, that way you can see the moths that are out there, but you also know that your mating disruption is working because the males aren't finding the pheromone alone trap. It's a great way to know that mating disruption is working. Now, as you're monitoring for navel orange worm, traps do need to be serviced. So we do know that all of these traps, regardless of the type, should be monitored at least once per week. Okay, that's pretty standard, with perhaps an exception of egg traps twice a week, specifically during April when you're trying to set a biofix. Now, in most cases, these lures uh, for the pheromones, they typically need to be replaced every four to eight weeks. That depends on the product. So consult the information that you get with each of those products to know exactly what that length is. 
And as far as liners, so when you look inside these traps, there's gonna be a sticky surface in each one, okay? These particular surfaces do need to be replaced. Uh, you can leave them out for several weeks, but obviously, once they get totally saturated with moths, you have to put a new liner in. And each one of these systems has a, a little bit different way to do that, but they all work similarly. So keep your liner clean, keep it changed, keep your pheromones so they're active, and they're gonna do their job at helping you to know what's going on in your orchard. Now, all of these services I've talked about are typical services provided by a pest control advisor. So you're welcome to do these yourself, but as I said, PCAs do this routinely. So as you're setting up contracts with your pest control advisor, you know, whether that's somebody in-house or with a distributor or somebody that's independent, um, ask them specifically what traps will they be using, uh, what information will they be giving you, and how often will they be giving you. That way you can gauge what kind of information they're gonna be getting from traps and their knowledge about how to use that information to help you make the best decisions in your orchard regarding naval orange worm management. For more information on how to use uh, egg and pheromone traps, including how to use degree day models to predict future flights and egg laying periods, please consult the Almond Board of California's website at almonds.com IPM or consult the University of California's Integrated Pest Management website for almonds.